Banana Warehouse has been a part of York for decades. It is currently being used as an antique store, owned and run by Dave D. How long have you been here and how did you get into the antiques and removal business? Right, my name's Dave D. I live in York. I've had the Banana Warehouse for about 11 years. I had the Apollo Warehouse for 22 years prior to that. So I've been in the business over 30 years. Why did you decide on the name Banana Warehouse? Because it was a banana warehouse. When I was a kid at our local school, St George's, down the road, um, I used to come along here and beg bananas for my lunch. <laughs> I had no lunch. <laughs> I'd spent it on sweets maybe, you know. Now I understand it's not just an antique store, you also uh, provide props to theatres um, and do housing hotel clearances. Which do you think is the most beneficial to your company? House clearances mainly. We do house clearances when people die, of course. They need to um, sell the stuff. Uh, we give a lot to charities. Uh, we actually do car boots ourselves, but we sort out antiques and the usable furniture. We mainly sell a lot of the furniture to people who's doing property letting, like uh, I was in estate agents and letting agencies, etc. Everything's got to comply with fire regulations. Everything that doesn't comply with re regulations has to be dumped. So how do you come about most of your products? People ring us and say, will you come and have a look and give us a valuation? Basically, that's where it starts. How do you go about valuing something? It's actually knowing what you can sell it for. That's, that's your basic thing. Because some things sold for a lot more money 10 years ago than what they sell now. Antiques. Antiques are worth nothing at this moment in time. And what do you enjoy the most about your job? Oh, house clearances. Taking my mum along so we can have a good route in a house. It's like Christmas for us. And my mum specifically likes it because she's uh, 84 and I still get her out there working and packing for us and sorting stuff out in the houses because when you when you go into these houses bread and butter is still on the table in some of the houses uh, you meet the family there's maybe four or five people just buried the mum or some the father or something like that and we've got to go in you've got to be tactful and you've got to look at the good the bad and the, in, the indifference hi i've just bought this from home i just wondered if you could tell us a bit about the history and how much it's worth yeah well it's a box brownie it's a mark three i call it a mark three um there is four different types. I actually have two different types of them, of this particular model myself. This is about 40s, 50s. Probably worth about £10. If you've got a good leather case with it, some of them came in a real good quality brown leather case. They're worth about £20 because the case gives it that much more mm -hmm. value. But you've got some in a plastic case, which I say yours comes in. <laughs> so £10 its value. If you add one of these, which is exactly the same mm -hmm. as yours. I'll take ten pounds a piece for them. Right, yours is probably worth a bit more because it's in better condition. This is like the box brownie. This one didn't catch on very well. They were a bad camera, so they only made them for about five years. But that's a Mark One brownie. They're worth about forty pounds, forty fifty pounds, depending on what they come in. The case again matters a lot. It's a real nice brown leather case. They're just going to use them as an handbag. Um, they probably fetch as much as the camera. We have a, a little spy camera here. Uh, you would cut your film and put it into, in the back in a dark room and wind it up yourself and then put it onto the little spool at the bottom and you would wind, wind it on after taking each film. You would make your own space between the... Uh, between the film itself. Uh, there is a, a locking device here, so you can't take a photograph by mistake. So you just slide that off, and the little shutter lever is there. Just a little action like that. All right, that is probably worth about 100 pounds. We haven't a case for that. If we do a proper case for it, that's what your James Bonds would have used in the 50s, 40s, maybe earlier. Here we have a, a Polaroid. This was one of the first polarizers that came out. As you can see, it's like the old cameras. Put it on a tripod as well. It has a tripod fix in there at the bottom, so it would sit more, more or less like that. Okay, and there's a little mechanism around here where it's a little tiny, tiny wire, kind of like a surgical wire, that you load it, 
and then you take your photograph by pressing this button after you've zoomed in. So we're very good, but the as you know the Polaroids have gone on to a lot better things than that now. Um, cameras on their own are collectors pieces and we have in, a, in our cabinet here probably about 30 or 40 cameras from cine cameras to original video cameras uh, that we've got here for sale. So cameras are a good investment if you start collecting the older ones, older ones than this. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The door was a beautiful occasion, what a memory to own. The greatest celebration that the Heelans have known. Lassie singing, healing, flinging, dancing on the toes. And Mrs. Heelan, laddie, looking mighty like a rose. Come along, come along, come along, join the swing of it. Dance to the music of the pipers as they play. Sing with a swing till you...